presentation. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the exploring your imaging signatures where Hawaii representation learning. Actually, there is uh, some overlap with the previous speaker. How about now? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, okay, we now see the uh, both slides as, as a problem. How do you protect that? I'm not sure. I, I never used it. So you see what's going on, right? So you have both all of that. So can you put yeah, the, so online? Audience, online is good. So yeah, okay, so let's let's do it. It's okay. Okay, so yeah, so there is some actually overlap with the previous speaker, uh Ricky uh Chen. So uh so today my talk will uh including uh four parts. The first uh, will be a uh, little bit of the introduction and background. And second, I will uh, introduce the different graph embedding techniques, uh, including uh, two different Euclidean space uh, embedding methods. Uh, basically, embed the graph into vectors and also uh, embed the high dimensional graph into uh, density Gaussian distributions. And also, uh, the third section, I will give uh, a presentation on hyperbolic graph embedding for human brain network analysis. Uh, mainly for two different applications, subjective cognitive decline prediction, and also uh, the normal brain aging trajectory detection. And that's the we give us a conclusion. So first, uh, because uh, I want to give a little bit some background about the brain disease, like our Alzheimer's disease uh, has all of it. So AB is a progressive brain network disease, uh, with very complex etiology and multiple pathogenesis. So by 2050, uh, there will be 152 million dementia patients and also 1.1 trillion healthcare costs in the world. And uh, if you look at this figure, actually, sorry, this is so small here. If you look at this uh, figure, you can see that actually uh, before, before the onset of the AD, we can see actually before the detection of the AD, actually, there is a, almost a two decades earlier uh, already, the people already developed the uh, AD, Alzheimer disease. So starting from 40 years old, actually, one of their 70 years old, actually, they uh, were detected as the Alzheimer disease patients. So there are three major uh, biomarkers for Alzheimer disease. So uh, uh, two different proteins, alpha beta uh, and also tau protein. And the other one is a very important one is the uh, brain connectivity alterations. Basically, we can use the uh, very uh, advanced uh, neuroimaging modality. Uh, this is a machine we call uh, magnetoencephalography. Uh, we call MEG your imaging uh, modality. So we can use this to mirror the brain activity directly uh, from different patients. So uh, in, and another topic application we are working on is for the normal brain aging trajectory detection. Uh, and we know that how our brain is a very core part of our human body and they also is a seamlessly intelligence and the operator of the senses and also yeah, an initiator of the body movement and also controller of behaviors. And our brain is uh, affected at both the structure and functional levels by uh, normal healthy aging. Uh, and also, uh, uh, we can see that uh, uh, the National Institute on Aging, uh, they announced actually they will continue to support the research to identify age-related neural changes and mechanisms that the older people use it to maintain optimal learning memory and the cognitive functions. But currently, uh, the, the studies about the trajectories of functional level brain connectivity alterations in the healthy brain aging are still not fully understood. Uh, it's very limited. And in our project, we aim to study normal brain aging trajectory by examining alterations in the hierarchical structure of the brain networks. Uh, including both the uh, brain regional level and also sub-network level changes over 
uh, around the 600 subjects between 18 years old and 89 years old. Uh, so with uh, actually different uh, imaging modalities like T1 structure MRI and also MEG function neural imaging data. So uh, this is a brief introduction about the neural imaging actually uh, modalities for into two broad categories, structural neural imaging and functional neural imaging. So we basically uh, now work on focusing on the functional neural imaging data, uh, MEG data. Uh, basically, the MEG uh, functional MRI and also EEG uh, are functional imaging modalities. So they can measure the brain activity concerns and also uh, for the uh, like the future MRI also is a functional neural imaging. They can uh, measure the molecular diffusion in the biological tissues. However, the structure of neural imaging will describe the shape of the uh, size and the integrity of the three and white matter structures in our human brain. So both based on both the structure and the functional neural imaging, we can actually uh, build the brain network, basically we call brain connectome, uh, based on the collected data. Uh, so we can, but we need to use some uh, uh, brain atlas, we also call it a brain template, so based, which actually has some predefined very comfortable regions. Uh, so we can actually based on the brain atlas to, break, to extract the brain uh, regional level transfers and then we can compute the brain connectivity matrix based on the matrix matrix photograph. And here we can, uh, uh, because our main focus is on the MEG uh, neural imaging data, actually we can compare with the other uh, functional neural imaging modalities, we can see that this has a very good temporal resolution. Uh, actually very excellent is in many seconds compared to the functional MRI. And it was invented by uh, a professor at MIT in the 1970s. Uh, so, and another very important property of MEG neural imaging is they can measure the absolute neural activity directly. Compared to functional MRI, actually they can only measure the relative neural activity there the oxygen of blood flow uh, near active neurons. So this is an indirect way uh, uh, And also I mean, when they collect the data, it can be reported in sleeping subjects and it contains less noise compared to functional MRI. Uh, so uh, that's some uh, uh, little background. Now we are talking about a human brain network. So human brain network, uh, basically based on the collected neural imaging data, we can build the human brain network with uh, uh, different uh, brain regions and different uh, no, uh, nodes in the graph. And also we have the connections between different uh, regions. So uh, in the human brain network, so actually they include uh, several modules and also hierarchical structure and nature. So it's different from uh, the unstructured the, uh, 2D images and also the uh, language data. So each graph node has a different number of neighbors and also has the actuary and very graph structure and sizes with a different number of uh, unordered nodes. So uh, another important is that you can need space and with complex interactions between the different nodes. And so how how do we calculate an efficient and large high information representation for the very complex human brain networks? And for uh, detecting early detection of the Alzheimer disease. And so next I will introduce some different graph embedding techniques. So we can use these techniques for human brain network embedding. So the first one actually is uh, uh, existing some graph representation learnings starting from uh, the 2016. Uh, the no tobacco method actually is motivated from the word tobacco is uh, proposed from Stanford group of and uh, they can project the graph of the representation as a low dimensional uh, vectors in the evening in space. And uh, the other um, uh, type of uh, uh, approach is graph of Gauss, is published in 2018. And also, there are other some similar works. So they can encode the high dimensional graph into density functional space space by uh, volume distributions. So they can actually quantify the uncertainty in the latent space for each graph node. And uh, in recent years, I started from 2017, I created the graph neural network of graph convolution neural network because of more and more popular and the attention networks. Uh, however, uh, 
This is also a uh, learning environment of the work adaptation of every representation as factor in the utopian space. And now, uh, due to the large language of uh, models, it becomes very popular the graph transformers model. Also, uh, there are kind of a lot of works on that. They can address the two main issues of the graph neural networks. Uh, the OS switching and the long term dependency, but with the uh, conjecture computational cost due to the self attention mechanism. However, uh, there are actually very limited methods that can capture the node level hierarchical property in the lab space. But the, the, this is very important for different downstream tasks, especially in healthcare and finance and transportation and many other domains. So uh, this is a, a little bit summary of my uh, previous work on uh, some textbook working mapping for stachyograph and temporal graphs. So uh, we have done some uh, static functional for natural embedding uh, into using in space before, basically to encode the very natural into a, into a, a lower dimensional Gaussian distribution so to quantify the certain information, basically how many subnetworks in the human brain network. Uh, using the variance of the uh, Gaussian values. Uh, so this are uh, our uh, two previous papers published in 2020 and, uh, 2020 and 2021. And uh, on the right panel, uh, it showed the dynamic graph value with uh, recent works, 2022 and 2024. Uh, this year, January, we published uh, around two papers on dynamic graph value. And so, this slide that will introduce uh, the static graph embedding into a human space for the early stage Alzheimer disease detection. Uh, this way, this is not in hyperbolic space, but in human space. Uh, but so, uh, this is for the real data set. We have 76 uh, mild cognitive impairments patients. They're uh, 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 actually working in a stable. Uh, MCI patients and also 28 progressive patients. Basically, they, they will uh, convert to dementia after two years. And we also have some uh, normal control subjects, so BD3, uh, for the uh, classification tasks. And the uh, imaging data is MEG data is five minutes and 306 uh, uh, channel. Uh, so basically, based on the fact that five minutes residency MEG data, we use the brain atlas, including uh, 68. This is the original texture state, and we can compute the information uh, uh, to uh, generate the uh, adjacent matrix for the brain can activity. And then we uh, actually we develop an approach based on uh, Gaussian embeddings. We can test this uh, brain connectivity uh, into lower dimensional Gaussian distribution in terms of the um, variance. And based on this embedding, we can actually do uh, different downstream tests. The first one, we actually do the classification for a progression prediction. And the second one, we actually want to detect, as shown in this size, we want to show which, uh, we want to detect which brain regions with a significant FGG network alterations between the different subgroups. For example, the very important two subgroup is the stable MCI and progressive MCI. Uh, why those people have uh, converted to the measure after two years? So uh, this is uh, the significant uh, regions with the significant alterations that detected based on the embeddings we learned from the neural networks. And uh, it's largely included in the temporal and frontal regions in the cortex. And the concept of the previous study using other different neural imaging data, especially the temporal uh, lobe that we have the hippocampus, which is very important for the Alzheimer's uh, disease, and we can actually uh, store our memory. So basically, it means uh, in the temporal lobe, actually, they have a big alterations uh, uh, between the two different subgroups. And on the right side, it shows the classification uh, results based on the different uh, uh, groups uh, for the classification. We do the uh, normal controls at the suitable MCI and progressive MCI. And here, uh, in the next following slides, I will uh, start to talk about why we want to choose a bottom space and an embedding space, because a lot of the complex and the real world is that it actually exhibit underlying hierarchical structural property, for example, the brain connectome and genetic state of protein network and the oncology networks and the network and so on. 
And you think in space, I have learning to the space for you, that in the like, train, like the graph data has very high running time of memory. So, however, the volume space as shown here is not to cover for this one. Compared to the Euclidean space, there's a parallel code for you can see that actually, uh, think can actually preserve both screen graph distances and the complex hierarchy. Uh, extremely efficient and they never do uh, dimensions. Uh, so on the right side, it shows the quantum disk uh, actually, uh, Ricky Chen just already presented the quantum disk and also the body to the many times. Uh, so they can actually, uh, are very technically in that. So those are still great graphs. So, uh, into and with a very high, uh, uh, like exponential growth, uh, growth space actually from the radius. We can see that if this is the current node of the uh, binary tree and the XY of the children nodes, we can see that actually the red curve shows the uh, parabolic distance and the pink curve, uh, the pink curve shows the geodesic distances and the blue curve shows the Euclidean distances. So we can see that parabolic distance can actually approximate me the uh, geodesic distance in the hyperbolic space. And also, uh, so here, this slide, we can show that more clear. So this is a Euclidean space to embed the tree like a graph, and also this is a hyperbolic space to uh, embed the tree like graph into a hyperbolic space. We can see that uh, in the Euclidean space, actually the nodes will overlap and also cluster uh, together. So uh, it's a require higher dimensions in the embedding space to embed more uh, nodes. However, in the hyperbolic space, it grows uh, exponentially with the hyperbolic radius and much uh, close to the boundary of the point radius, we can see there are more uh, space to embed those children nodes. And also it uh, has a lower, much lower distortion actually it's all the nodes that can be separable in the left hand space and they require a very small uh, embedding size. So, the important thing for us to start the very network is the hierarchical problem. So, uh, this is some of the fundamental uh, mathematical formulas for the high volume space representation models. There are two very typical models you know, for the high volume manifold representation is concrete model. Actually, uh, proposing in a uh, meta company in 2017 and 2018, uh, Dr. Uh, I think, uh, yeah. So, uh, we can see that as, uh, compared to concrete, uh, they have a very different uh, the distance uh, um, uh, formulas here. This is the DP uh, XY, this is the DL in the Lorenzo model. Uh, so the distance is much simpler, so it's numerically more stable and simpler formulas, and more efficiently running optimization, and it's, it's scalable to larger distance. And here, the key is a, a curve. And here, uh, in the hyperbolic space, they cannot use the synthetic readiness and optimization, either they need to use another optimizer. Is called the remaining XGD optimizer. Basically, uh, we need to upgrade max uh, differs from the uh, based, based on the uh, exponential map from the tangent space to manifold and also to manifold from manifold to tangent space to use a lot of map. So, this is a, a, a how to compute the gradient of the parameter CPT and the theta is, eta is the learning rate. And here is the all our many SGD optimization, how to update the weight parameters. And this is the ob uh, objective function so to, uh, uh, in the remaining uh, uh, manifold space. And here uh, shows uh, uh, the hyperbolic embedding uh, compared to the Gaussian embedding uh, I used to work on for the brain networks. So hyperbolic embedding, we can see that this is from a, a Dr. Nichols paper in 2017 for the word uh, language, word net database, uh, data set. So we can see that in the central of the point disk, we can see uh, the word is more binary and has a high hierarchy. And also goes through uh, towards the boundary, we can see to the location and to the city and to New York. It's more and more specific than the 
has a higher, uh, has a lower hierarchy. Uh, so this is a very important property for us to study brain networks. That's why uh, we want to choose this approach uh, to study uh, the brain disease and also the aging uh, trajectory detection over time. So next, uh, I will uh, present two uh, recent projects. First one is the using the Hubble with graph convolution neural network. Actually, uh, the first uh, initial paper is published in 2019 from the Stafford group. Uh, so here we work on the MEG data using the uh, AAL brain atlas, including 90 brain regions, to uh, learn the brain uh, novel mechanics for different brain corporal regions. And here, this is the output. And we can see that actually uh, uh, the triangle basically in, in, indicates the left hemisphere regions, and the circle represents the regions in the uh, right hemisphere. So we can see actually it is split to different uh, uh, sides in the point where it is. So this is a, uh, it's a symmetric, actually. This is a good validation for brain network because we have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. Uh, so, uh, so this is a uh, very unusual because not many papers using hypotomy mapping for brain uh, connectivity. So uh, in the very beginning, we need to validate this approach uh, works for brain connection. And so in our project, we have 49 subject to cognitive client patients. So basically, those patients will have uh, five times likely converted to Alzheimer's disease. And we also have uh, another conversion group, but it's for one uh, clinical normal sectors. And uh, so this paper is now under revision. So it's already on the preprint, it's on the viral archive. Um, yeah, we got very good uh, comments recently from the actually very, very good journal. And here uh, is a comparison uh, for the experimental results for the data validation task with uh, three different baseline. Basically, it's a, a, a standard graph convolution neural network in the using space and also temporary dialing. And uh, another is a hypothetical graph uh, HJCN model uh, with the fixed cover for. And also, we also study uh, the cover for as the learned parameters. So we can see that based on the learned cover um, Settings, the C, capital C here is a learned and active curve. You can see that actually, uh, with a pixel curve, actually, the learned curve can uh, get actually a better results, better performance. And also, in the another work, uh, funding space on this result is uh, also consistent with a very initial paper from uh, uh, 2017. Is that uh, hypothetical embeddings? We can only need a fewer embedding dimensions compared to the Euclidean space of JSON. And we can see that they need an uh, embedding dimension of uh, 80 to achieve 82% accuracy. And here we can only use actually dimension 3 to obtain 95% accuracy for the correlation task. So finally, we choose the three dimensions of its learned curve for C. To, uh, to, to generate the uh, brain regional embeddings for the downstream task, we want to study what's the difference between uh, the hierarchical changes uh, in different sub networks. So, here this is the uh, dorsal attention network, and also this is the ventral attention network, and this is the sensor motor network. So, the loop. Bars to show the health control, and also the red one show the subject in cognitive decline. We can see that actually the SCE subjects has a very uh, decreased uh, hierarchical uh, radius, hypothetical radius in the left space. Basically, means when the radius uh, decreases, basically uh, it means they uh, lose more connections and. Uh, so the green connections, basically the node degree will be used. And so uh, for the healthy normal control uh, people, they have a more stronger connectivity because uh, maybe due to some dead neurons and so on. And also this is some relations with the hierarchical operation to cognition, cognition uh, based on uh, some other literature. So the three sub-network is a uh, uh, Pronounce uh, alterations between the two subgroups actually uh, 
parties with some higher uh, scores on the depression scale. Uh, so, and the central motor uh, network also um, has greater impairment in uh, completing daily function activities and also those attention has a higher subject in reading of memory failures. So uh, these are very important um, detection for study the SCD prediction. And this is a we study uh, because if, if you would want to ask, actually the brain network is one of the largest geographic, why you don't need, why you just uh, compute based on the original adjacent matrix, is a small uh, matrix. Based on that paper, so basically we, this is a, the blue, uh, this is a histogram and the blue histogram, the bars show based on the original uh, adjacent matrix then the classification result. Uh, however, the green and the red parts show based on the embedded paper and also combine the embedded paper with the original adjacent matrix papers. We can see actually that the bottom and papers capture partially unique papers and improve the classification uh, scores over the original adjacent papers. And the second project that we want to uh, uh, talk, I want to talk about is about the uh, very recent work actually where recognized first is on the human brain aging trajectory uh, on six hundred healthy uh, patients across the three uh, across the seven decades, age decades, so from eighteen years old to uh, eighty nine years old. So uh, we have the NEG neuroimaging data, and also we want to detect the changes in uh, regional level and also subject level across time. So this is uh, our data set uh, from the compound data set. So we have seven different decades from a uh, very like a teenager to uh, like more older people, 18 to 90 years old. And we have, um, and this is the how many female subjects, basically 50% and 50% uh, female and 50% male, uh, approximately. Uh, so in total, we have 587 subjects. And the imaging data is the uh, skewed functional FDG neural imaging data. Uh, computed based on the very atlas HCP is a very popular one, uh, including 360 uh, brain particle regions in brain. And so this is a, a uh, physiological value basically is a uh, metric for the brain connectivity estimation. Uh, so this data set is from our collaborator in the University of Trento factory. Uh, they have an MEG center there. And so in this data set, we also have other multi model features like colorful signals basically based on the structure and MRI data set. They can uh, mirror the signals of the portal. And also we have another manipulation. Uh, this is also very, um, as demonstrated, is a very like, uh, indicator for aging, human brain aging. So we have two uh, different uh, modality papers and also uh, the MEG neural imaging brain networks. And we uh, input these you know, features and also the brain adjacent uh, to the hydraulic graph conversion neural network to generate the human brain uh, in that network embeddings. And this is a, we want to quantify the hydraulic radius changes over age decades, uh, seven different age decades, and every age decade we have around I think uh, one hundred subjects, uh, less than one hundred eighty subjects around eighty five. So this is for the right to early uh, visual uh, forecast. So we can see that actually the hydraulic radius increasing uh, over aging decades. So this is a uh, basically reduced hierarchy of the right early visual cortex of your aging among this uh, 587 subjects. And this is more detailed the results based on the uh, RI, basically the regional matrix level uh, hierarchical changes across age decades for six different subnetworks. Uh, we can see actually the interesting finding in this project is some, like I said, some uh, sensory and motor subnetwork, we can see actually they maintain the hydraulic hierarchical radius actually maintain until uh, 60 years old and after 60, 70 years old, I see this financially uh, grows. Basically, the, the connection goes after 60 or 70, 70 years old. 
However, like this one is a primary resource, basically, uh, is a very important area they are looking for. And it's like a linear increase, basically, the hierarchical decrease linearly. So it's like a heterogeneous changes over time. And this is a, a cortex hypothetical radius for different uh, sub network level. And the different color part show the different seven different age decades. So the blue, the purple show the teenager 18 to 30 years old. And then we can see actually uh, some, basically we compute the slope for this each sub network. And this is a, a final result based on seven or level hierarchical gradient slope. So uh, basically, the sub network is a larger slope value have more pronounced hierarchical changes beyond aging. We can see the primary visual, early visual cortex has a higher um, hierarchical changes over aging. However, the early auditory and posterior, uh, posterior. Uh, upper shoulder has a relative like an unchanged hierarchy. So this is a more uh, uh, studies about in the hypothesis space, basically the value space, we study the different, we compare the first decade, basically the 30 years old to uh, 30 years old. And uh, for the early whistle, basically we find we have an increased average hypothetic radius. This will decrease the hierarchy, uh, lose more connections over aging. And this is the seven decades when the people are between 80 years old and 90 years old. We can see this is a, the hypothetical superior has increased uh, after the seven decade. So uh, when you uh, get a, a, like aging, uh, over aging, so the early visual cortex basically uh, decrease the hierarchy, lose more uh, connections due to, like, due to some diagnosis. And this is the early auditory. We can see in the hypothetical space, they didn't change that much. Uh, this way it remained unchanged between the first uh, uh, age decade and the second age decade. And this is a visualization uh, in the 3D human brain for the left hemisphere, uh, this side, and the right hemisphere. So uh, this is the early, early visual for uh, sub network region, basically is uh, in the occipital uh, lobe. They can process some images and uh, it's a very important area. And here, the sensory and motor is a second uh, sub network that we found have the uh, uh, increasing lobe here. Um, uh, the larger lobe is a decrease the uh, hierarchy. So, so this, uh, these are the very important uh, regions. Uh, this way, the subnet for the level uh, hierarchical changes for the aging, human brain aging trajectories. And lastly, I want to thank you my all my great collaborators at MIT. Uh, this way, I work with two master students for their master thesis uh, in 2021, uh, 2022 and 2023. And they are graduates now. And, uh, Working the Amazon Robotics and uh, some uh, startup. And also, thank you, my collaborator from Madrid, uh, to provide the data for the SCD, the first project, and the second project, the data provided from the University of Chantel in Italy. And also, thank you, uh, other uh, collaborator from the Johns Hopkins and the Houston, uh, the University of Texas and Houston, Houston Center. Uh, and uh, uh, my and this is uh, all the references uh, about the, this graph uh, embedding uh, work for both brain networks and the two for the dynamic graph embedding networks. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Next talk. Also, there is some fresh copy in that. Okay. Um, yeah, 